Hey everybody, it's Romania Black. We are on episodes 43 through 45 of season two of Ace of the Diamond. I just realized as I'm sitting down to record this that I only have three weeks left of this series until we're finished with season two. What? <laughs> There's only three sets left. We have 43 through 45, 46, 47, 48, and then 49, 50, and 51. We have three weeks left of season two. And then I'm going to move on into act, act two, that is technically season three. And what? <laughs> but we, we still have a long way to go. And a lot can happen. We have nine episodes left of this season. And a lot can happen in nine episodes. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm just, mm-hmm. Well, that's gonna happen. We're only at the, like the third inning. We're only technically in the third inning, and Raichi has come onto the field to pitch. Um, as I'm recording this, several of you have been commenting about the the Seiko game and Kosei versus Raichi and all of that, and it still baffles me. Like I've only learned about baseball through Ace of the Diamond, and it still fascinates me that uh, a lot of people have been commenting about how the players can all switch on the rosters, and it always baffled me because. I know that like Faria goes and plays outfield and so does Saomura. It's just really surprising that we've set up in this series the catcher and the pitcher to be such dynamic positions. And it's to me, it's always felt like, oh, well, you're either a catcher and a batter or a catcher and an outfielder or, well, not an outfielder because you're the catcher, or, um, or you're a pitcher and an outfielder, things like that. But it's never occurred to me that you could be the pitcher and the catcher. So that, that's always thrown me off. But it's great. I'm excited about it. And here we have Raichi, who's just having the time of his life pitching, may shown up fashionably late. And yeah, and the score is technically it's two to zero. So they're ahead by two, but that means nothing because we're only in the third inning. And we've established that Faria can come out probably for one inning. It's just a matter of when. Nori's still pitching. Sawamura's still in the wings. Lots can happen, and we're just getting started with this game. But Sato had the momentum. They did really good in the last set of episodes until Raichi came out to pitch, and then it just all kind of went crazy from there. But So I'm excited to see what's going to happen. But yeah, these this game so far has been a lot of fun. The last several games have been really good in this season, and I'm going to be really excited to see how we end up closing out on it. So who knows? But anyway, let's not waste any more time, shall we? We're going to get started on episode 43 to this side. Hmm, I don't know what that means, but we're gonna start that here in three, two, one, and let's go. Whoo! <laughs> Man, these episodes were great. These were so good. I, You should not be surprised at this point. I don't think there's been a bad episode in this series. But, man, there's a lot to like about these episodes. Uh, episodes 44 and 45 were really good. Episode 43, setting up a lot of things. A lot of things being set up. Holy cow. Okay. So, like I said, we only have nine. Now we only have six episodes left uh, of season two. So that's crazy. Only six episodes left, and we're in between the fifth and sixth inning. Right, and it's tied three to three. Oh, God, and Raichi's up against Salmara. My stress levels next set of episodes are going to be ridiculous. But yeah, so we only have six episodes left. So I think it's important. This series is a nice job of setting stuff up pretty early on when it's going to build towards the next season. And this is no exception. Setting up uh, four players who are going to be first years. They're all these guys are middle schoolers. What the heck? No. What are you, what are you feeding these kids? But especially Musashi. Musashi is an eighth grader. I'm like, the dude is swole. What the hell? Yuki, what is your family like? <laughs> I'd love to see Yuki's family. I feel like they're all very serious. They're a very serious family from what their attitudes are like. But yeah, so God, setting up a lot of stuff here. So Koshu is the blonde with the green eyes. Koshu is the blonde, the, the pretty boy. I feel, I feel like he's a catcher. Like keep the pretty boy catcher thing at Sato going, right? Um, so Koshu is the catcher, and Sato is, I'm assuming the batter, he's got the head, the bandana. He seems like, I don't know enough about his character yet to know what he's like. Koshu's so super serious, and then you have Musashi, who's super serious, and it seems like Musashi, Musashi and and Koshu were rival, were ri from rival schools, right? They're not from the same high school. They're from rival high schools. But I feel like the real rivalry, 
as the catcher and pitcher is between Shinji and Koshu. Shinji's a pitcher, and he's going to Inashiro. Oh, my God. Setting up. Uh, a lot of you said that the third act, the act two, the third season is really good. This is setting up some interesting dynamics because they'll be first years, right? And Salmer and the others next year will be second years. And so, oh, my God, are you serious? I I love this. I love that we have Sato and uh, Koshu and Musashi look like they're going to be the standout starting Sato next year. And then Shinji with, Shinji with Inoshiro. I'm honestly the most excited about that right now because of the dynamic we're already seeing forming between him and Mei and Itsuki. And we're going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about that because I, hmm, going to talk about that dynamic because I'm, it's going to be interesting, I feel. Okay, because I like Shinji's character so far a lot. Um, we'll talk about him. But yeah, so Raichi. Raichi as a pitcher, I like that we establish over and over again in this set of episodes that Raichi is really just pitching fastballs, just as fast as he can. There's no control. There's no consistency. The, the thing that Raichi can do as a pitcher is he has insane strength, like his athleticism. He's, he's got so much upper body strength and so much lower body strength. Like, I just picture, Raichi seems like he's like five foot six, five foot seven. I just picture this tiny jacked high schooler. He's got so much muscle, right? And he just doesn't show it because he's so, um, like, he's pretty petite in stature, but like, just ripped. Um, but yeah, Raichi has so much muscularity and so much athleticism that he just makes it work. He's got so much upper body strength, he doesn't get tired. He's got the stamina too, right? So he just, just pitches as hard as he can in a straight line. It's all he's got to do. As long as he doesn't think about it, it's fine. Um, but yeah, figuring out that Shinji the redhead is the ace of his junior high and they didn't pitch a lot last year because he was going through growing pains which I get it my brother's like 6'3 my brother's a pretty tall guy and he used to be like 4 foot 11 and over the course of a summer he like grew a foot and he had growing pains like his legs hurt all the time it hurt to move like he ate a lot like my brother is a big guy and he just, I remember seeing him go through those growing pains and he couldn't really do much of anything that summer. It was just like, nope. And so I get it. I get why he wouldn't pitch as much, but it's interesting. Very interesting. So we get, we'll come back to him. I'm going through my notes. So Mishima and Zono, they seem very similar like characters. I noted that. Nori was doing so good. It was until that until he hit that pitch of Raichi's that it just all, this team, Sato and its injuries, like, Y'all need a physical therapist on on staff full time, I feel, because they just, they can't avoid it. Everybody's just trying to injure Sato, trying to get them out of this. And and Raichi, Raichi nearly hit Nori in the head like he did Miyuki. Like, Raichi nearly hit him. And I, I appreciate that Raichi came up and he, like, apologized again. He was like, sorry. But Raichi's just like a loose cannon. Like, he's just not, and we'll talk about May's view of him. May does not like Raichi as a pitcher at all. May was just getting mad watching him. He was like, no. Like, you're an insult to pitchers, right? But nearly hitting him in an apology. And, and this ties to Nori. I loved Nori's monologue where he was talking about, like, I don't have a lot of raw talent. I'm like, Nori, no. But he's like, just like Yuki, Nori's like, I've had to practice and work really hard to get where I'm at. And I had to learn to be creative. And I love that idea that Nori's like, I'm not a good pitcher. I'm not great. But I... I know what I can do, what my body can do. I'm aware of what my body's limits are. And so he's like, he developed the slider and the sinker because he's like, that's something creative that I can make work to my advantage. And I'm like, oh, it's so sweet. I absolutely love it. I love that monologue that he had. But then, yeah, after he swung at Raichi's pitch, his hand, just like, just like the feel of it, like it was, and Todoroki calls out, he's like, your hand's probably numb. So the fact that he pitched that long after it, I'm pretty surprised by. But yeah, Carlos describes Raichi's pitching as barbaric, which is, yes, there's like, it's bare bones. It's just power. It's just straight brute force, and he's just hoping that he can overpower the batter. And May says he's just winging it. May calls it. May calls it from the start. May's like, he's just winging it. He's just throwing a ball, and eventually he's going to crumble because eventually the batters are going to figure it out, and they're going to overpower him. And yeah, May's, May's exactly right. That's exactly what happens. But... It's just, it's very interesting because the whole time, May just looks disgusted as Raichi as a pitcher. Because it makes sense. May's like, 
I've worked my whole life to finesse myself as a pitcher and develop this unique style and stay on the mound and do all of this. And Raichi is just like, it's like spitting on that, right? Because Raichi just has raw force. And May's like, it's like you're the type of, Yuki said right that Raichi was the type of pitcher he hates because he can't predict anything. And May's like, you're the type of pitcher I hate because you don't take this seriously. You don't realize the finesse involved with this position and you're just throwing the ball in this line and hoping that it works out. It makes sense why May seems pretty disgusted by him throughout these episodes. Um, and so then, and we'll go back to that here in a little bit, right? Um, we'll go back to that really quick. I guess I can go ahead and touch on it. But yeah, when Nori, when Raichi hit Nori's pitch, um, well, we'll tie back to that because that was more about Nori than it was about Raichi. We'll tie back to it. But yeah, so Shinji shows up to hang out with Inoshiro, hanging out with the team that he's joining next year. Shinji is going to be interesting with Inoshiro because... I like Inishiro, but a lot of its characters are smart asses. <laughs> like, they are just cocky. Like, Carlos, I love him. Carlos is probably the most chill of all of them. But Shirakawa, he's a smart ass. May's a smart ass. <laughs> um, you have poor Itsuki trying to deal with it all. You have a bunch of, maybe smart ass isn't the right word, you've got a bunch of divas on Inoshiro. Harada was like keeping the diva in check, but Harada's gone now and Itsuki's still learning. But then you come, Shinji looks like a cinnamon roll and Shinji's like, hey, hi friends. Oh my gosh, let's be besties. I'm so excited to play for you all. Like he seems like a big cinnamon roll, right? He seems like he has like, he's like a mix between Tojo and Sawamura. He's like got the super optimism of Sawamura, but he's got like the laid back, chill, friendly casualness of Tojo. I feel like he's a combo of those two, which is going to be interesting because as I've said a few episodes ago, in Ashiro they can have synergy and they can play well as a team, but they don't seem like they're all besties. Like I don't see in Ashiro having like a spa night where they all go get facials together. I don't see that happening, right? Like they can work together and have good camaraderie, but they just don't seem to have like the friendship and the nakama that Sato does, right? In Ashiro just doesn't seem that way. It's a lot of lone wolves put together on a team and they all acknowledge each other but they don't like go hang out together it seems right they all kind of do their own thing and Shinji seems like he's gonna be the person to change that Shinji will be like let's all be buddies and they're like hmm. but here's the thing here's my prediction with Shinji and that's why I'm really excited about him joining Inoshiro even though it terrifies me because I'm like shit Shinji seems like he's really super friendly and he's a cinnamon roll but he's really good as a pitcher he seems like, because because Koshu notices him, Musashi notices him, they're all like, well, at first they're like, who are you again? And then they realize who he is because he looked different. But they know the name. They know the name that he's the ace pitcher from this junior high. So I feel like Shinji's going to be really talented. And I'm interested in seeing if that's going to be competition for May. Because May, the last two years has really not had any competition on the mound. I mean, yeah, they have other pitchers, but it's always seemed like that was the fallback. Like if May was having an off day, I guess we'll put in this other pitcher. Or if May's not performing like he needs to, I guess we'll put in this other pitcher. But it's like, it's always been a last ditch resort. But with Shinji, Shinji seems like, kind of like Salmura, like he's a really wild card good pitcher. Or maybe like Furuya, maybe Furuya is a better comparison. That he's a really good pitcher. And so I feel like, Shinji starts off on the right foot, right? Shinji, he he notices, unlike everyone else, he's like, wow, you're carrying all this luggage. Why? Like, Itsuki's been standing there the whole time carrying two bags. Like, his shoulders have to be numb at this point. But he's carrying both his bag and Mei's because Mei's a diva. And Shinji's like, oh, you're carrying two bags. Do you want me to grab one of those? Like, he's instantly nice. He seems like he's very uh, congenial. And I feel like he'll get along great with the coach because he seems receptive to feedback already, um, which May has not been, unless he's been, like, shouted at. Um, but he also instantly gets in May's good graces. He's like, oh, I'm so excited to work with a pitcher I respect. And May's like, oh, really? Who's me? Who, me? Like, he's, he's playing up May to where May's going to be like, oh, sweet little first year. I'm a third year now. I'll take you under my wing. But what I'm thinking is that Shinji's actually really good. And that Shinji is maybe, I think May's going to have a handful because Shinji may be really talented and May thinks he's just going to take this kid under his wing and show him the ropes. 
But Shinji may walk in and already kind of pick up on the ropes really quickly and start to give May a run for his money as a third year pitcher. That's what I'm thinking is going to happen. And I really kind of hope that it will, because that's going to be really exciting because it's one thing when you have somebody like, like May, who's kind of cocky and diva-ish come in and be a good pitcher. And you're like, you expect them to cause a stir. But then when you have somebody that seems like a cinnamon roll, like Shinji, who's actually really talented come in, that's going to shake up the dynamic. And I'm, I'm super interested to see like, is May going to be able to maintain his power as the ace and his, you know, spirit of the ace when this first year comes onto the field and maybe really, really talented and, and give him a threat. That's going to be interesting. And I may be totally wrong. I may be totally wrong. May may totally put Shinji in his place and be like, first year, I'll take you under my wing. And it, Maybe a totally different scenario, but the moment that we get his introduction, it's like it's like the mangaka slowly like putting him there for a reason. I could be totally wrong, but I kind of hope it's gonna. I'm, I'm excited to see this dynamic. I really am. But yeah, so Raichi saying like Nori, you want to be friends? And, and now that we're even, and Nori's like, no, not at all. Um, but he, he gives him the pitch that gives him the home run. And at that point, what I was going to say earlier was that May notes, because at first, Itsuki's like, wow, right, you hit. And May's like, shut up. Which was kind of rude to Itsuki. And I hope that that's another dynamic. Like, May is still kind of rude to Itsuki. Like, he's making him hold his bags. And I feel like Shinji, it's going to be interesting to see if Shinji develops a really cool battery with Itsuki. And May's kind of like on the outside, like, why are you getting along so great with Itsuki? Itsuki's my catcher. Like, no, no, I'm the pitcher. Like, because May kind of has that lone wolf syndrome like the other third years. And it makes sense that Itsuki's going to be a second year and Shinji's first year. They want to develop a battery that's going to carry on the next two years. And so May, it's going to be interesting. I'm already really excited to see Inishiro with Shinji on the team. Like, that dynamic seems like it's going to change things up. And I'm ready for it. I'm really excited. But, yeah. Uh, Nori's hand injury. Mm -mm. And he tries to pull a Miyuki. He tries not to give up. But the thing of it is, in Nori's position, he's using that hand constantly. Like, Miyuki's been able to hold out for so long because his the way he's positioned as a catcher, he doesn't have to overexert himself. Or he hasn't so far. The pitchers have all been helping him to not overexert himself without them even realizing he's injured. But I feel like... I feel like in Miyuki's case that... It's all just going to catch up eventually. And in Nori's case, it catches up way quicker. And so we start to see it with Miyuki, but we'll, we'll get to that. So yeah, episode 44 starts, and God, that double play. That double play was so good. Kurmochi catching that ball barehanded, throw it to Haruichi, then doing the double play. Like, when Rio compliments, that's when you know it's good. Yeah, it was so good. And then I, I love that Todoroki's like just, I got nothing. What do we do with that? What do we do? But everybody knows Nori's hand. And Todoroki comments, he's like, your hand's not just tingling a little. It's numb. Like, you could barely hold on that ball. And so, then, yeah, Nori has the walk. He hits somebody by contact. And then he's just out of steam. And they tie it two to two. And it just ties. Um, and so then, yeah, Nori... At that moment with Katioka was... Katioka did some tough love in these episodes. And with Miyuki, I, it's totally valid. I did feel a little bit bad for, for Kawakami. But it's almost like Katioka doesn't... Katioka doesn't sugarcoat it. He's like, I wish you could have pitched more. Like, I'm sad that that happened. And Kawakami, like, crying in the dugout. And Furuya... Furuya, unlike Saomura, Furuya handles things like... Like, he hands him the... the the cup and then he notices that Kawakami's really sad and he's like okay and so he lays it down beside him and he goes to warm up because he's like that's the only thing I know how to do like what what do you say to that right like he's like I'm gonna go warm up so I can help out Salmura if I need to and it's like mm -hmm. but I felt bad for Nori like he was disappointed in himself and that's really sad and when he, when he put all the energy in the ball for Salmura like he was like what Salmura did for him in the past I'm like that's such a good parallel it's great and Salmura's had a really good game so far which makes me nervous because he's against Todoroki and it's tied. I just want Salomar to strike him out. That's all I want. It's the fifth inning, though, so I don't know. But I just want Salomar to strike him out. That's all I want. I'm like, damn it. Damn it! Mm -hmm. or, or walk him. Just walk Todoroki. Nobody's walked Todoroki yet. But I'm like, if you're going to do it, do it. Just walk him. 
don't don't face up against him. But I don't know. I don't think that's a good idea because then Sonata's right after him. And if he gets the mindset that he had to walk Todoroki and then Sonata comes up to bat, like what's his mindset going to be? Like it, It's very strategic that Todoroki put them back to back. Like so strategic to, to keep something like that from happening. But yeah. So then understand. Yeah, at first... Uh, Yukushi under eight, underestimates Saomura post the game against this, back in the summer against Yukushi. They underestimate him. And then he quickly turns that back around, right? He quickly turns it back around. Yeah. The idea that God, they they had two to three. They were two to two and then it wasn't Saomura's fault. Um, Hagisa he missed. Yeah, Higasa. Higasa. I can say his name right. Higasa missed at the third base and caused them to score. It wasn't Salmer's fault, so I'm glad Salmer didn't get beat up about it, but that sucks that Higasa let them score that run. Um, but then, yeah, Salmer's cheer, the best fastball to get that out. That that got May's attention. May hasn't commented at all about the changeup at all. We haven't heard uh, May comment about Salmer's pitching much. I'm assuming, I'm wondering against Raichi if May will comment next episode about it. But he does seem to be like, like, oh, like Salmer can pitch a regular fastball and it'd be effective? Hmm. Interesting. You have grown from the summer. But yeah, that I love when the stands do Salmer's cheer. Like, yes, yes, yes. I love it. But Salmer's in his own, so he doesn't, he doesn't cheer back, which is, I was a little worried at first about that, but then you, you realize, nah, Salmer's just He's taking this seriously. And they're like, oh, that Baca's learning. It's like, hmm. So then, yeah, Raichi, again, establishing that he's not in control of this pitching. He's just being a wild card and just pitching. Because right after that, he's Raichi is so hyped up about batting against Saomura that he walks three people right off the bat. He walks three people, and they're like, Raichi, what are you doing? And then when Miyuki comes up to bat, it, it's kind of like, but it's a nice, it's a weird reflection of the Inishiro game because back during the Inishiro versus Sato game at the end of season one, May, when he saw Yuki, May knew that Yuki was a threat and he was like, no, he's going to do change up every time against Yuki because he knew he couldn't afford to let Yuki go to bat. And Raichi, it's almost like his instinct kicks in. The moment he sees Miyuki, he's like, oh, this guy, got to focus on this guy. And it's like he instinctually shifts gears and gets Miyuki out. But Miyuki, Miyuki's been playing it safe. Because he doesn't want to agitate that injury, but by playing it safe, he's underperforming. And everyone starts to notice. <laughs> and, yeah, he gets Miyuki out, and everybody thinks something's up. And Kurmochi's on third base when Zono comes up, and even Zono notices. When The moment that Zono noticed, I was like, man, this is telling. And Zono, I feel bad for him because he's, like, the last one to know. Everybody else, even up in the stands by this point, has figured it out, and Zono's like... I'm the last one. You knew Kurumochi. Everybody knew. What? No. So then, yeah, we start episode 45. And I like the Sonata. He's like, just just pitch down the middle. That's, that's all you have to do, Raichi. That's literally all you have to do. Just pitch down the middle and only do fastballs. It's fine. And then that, that showdown between Zono and Raichi is probably going to be the thumbnail. Although I may pull Patreon because there's several good shots in this last, in episodes 45 and yeah, in episode 45, there's several good shots. Um, one of them being um, Raichi versus Zono. And just Raichi starting to feel the pressure. The pressure of the mound. Because before, Raichi's whole deal was he's like, I'll just overpower him. And it's fine. But now that the batters have figured Raichi out and they're applying pressure, Raichi can't handle it. He's like, oh, oh I don't like this. And I love Zono's monologue where he says, I failed as a vice captain because I, I couldn't figure it out and I couldn't support him like I needed to. I'm like, oh, Zono, you haven't failed as a vice captain. No. But he puts on that scary face and Raichi's like, the mound is a scary place. And, oh, it's great. And then Kurumochi, he gets that, that tying run to tie the game and the bases get loaded again even after Zono gets out. And yeah, May is distinctly mad at Raichi. May has a big spiel too. Like right after that moment that the game is tied and Raichi's inconsistent, Itsuki notices he's like, man, Raichi's being really inconsistent again. And May's like, he's failing as a pitcher. May is like, his job is no matter. Because that's what May's been struggling with, right? Back when they lost that game at the beginning of the season, May was like, May had this whole thing about inconsistency. 
And so he's like projecting some of that anger onto Raichi. And he's like, your job as a pitcher is to keep pitching no matter what happens. And he's like, you're just letting those inconsistencies mount up. And it's just, I find May's anger at Raichi as a pitcher very in character and really well done. I liked it in these episodes. It was great. And now the batter is putting on the pressure onto him and he just can't handle it. It's just he, like May predicted back two episodes before, he crumbled. It just, all the pressure got to him and he just couldn't keep up the facade. And I like that Todoroki acknowledges this and he's like, my son's stupid <laughs> and he needs to just not think on the, on the field. He needs to just go by gut instinct and let the practice and everything pay off. But he says that when you're a pitcher, he's like, unlike batters and fielders, pitchers have to initiate the play. He's like, that's really important. And Todoroki acknowledges that his son, he's like, my son is not good at that. And you know what? It ties perfectly to Raichi's character because in real life, off the field, Raichi can't initiate anything. He's so shy, he can't initiate communication. He's so shy that he doesn't initiate the first words with anybody. He doesn't initiate anything. I joked in the reaction to all the girls up in the stands were like, oh my God, Todoroki. I'm like, that's going to go nowhere because he can't initiate any conversation with them. So it's so funny that it ties perfectly to his character on and off the field, that he's not someone that initiates things. And for being a pitcher, he's not going to be good at initiating that play. To like, He's not going to be the one to try to take down the batter. He's just, just functioning on instinct. Like, okay, the catcher wanted something, I'll give it to him. But he can't have that gut instinct to initiate the contact. It's, it's interesting. And I like that Todoroki is aware of that, right? But he realizes, he's like, yeah, I didn't want to put Sonata in, but we really don't have a choice. He he needs to come in right now, so we need to do that. I love it, and I love Sonata's like, really, you're switching me now in a clutch moment? But as we established in the last set of episodes, or the ones before it, Sonata likes the pressure. So Sonata's all about this. He's like, oh, you want to switch me in now in this clutch moment? Oh, okay. And Raichi goes to third, and Mishima goes to first. I like it. So we also established that Sonata is good with two seamers and cutters. That's like his specialty. That's what he's best at. And, and Sonata's super chill. Sonata's kind of the best person to put in a clutch scenario because he's like, I, okay, we'll just do it. It's fine. We got this. It's all good. Like, he's the best person to put into a clutch scenario because he can handle it. And I love that about his character. I love that Sonata, Sonata's not cocky. He doesn't get, like, diva-ish or anything. He's, like, really laid back to the point where you'd almost think he's lazy. But, again, he looks like a supermodel, so it's kind of like, it's it sort of, like, puts up a persona, right? But he's great. And then, yeah, Higasa going straight to Raichi. Like, Higasa hits the ball straight to Raichi. Raichi barely gets it. And I love that, I love that when everybody... <laughs> I love that when Raichi throws it, everyone is like, Raichi, no! Like, they're afraid he's going to throw it wild. Like, they get so nervous about him. And he's like, what? I got it. And then, I love it. I love how worried they are. But then, yeah, it's everybody's worried about Raichi. But then, it's fine. It's not, I was like, oh, thank God. Thank God he's... It's not, I was like, thank God I can trust my teammates. And then the whole Super Nada. He calls him Nada Senpai. Super Nada. Um... I love that Sonata's like, does this family, like, love me? And I'm like, no, no, they want to adopt you into the family. I think that the Todorokis would adopt Sonata. That's, like, the one thing that I think the ship works. Because you'd be like, well, would Tod Todoroki would be like, oh, you want to marry my son? Yes, please, join our family. It's fine. I totally approve of this union. Like, like he's ready to plan the wedding now. <laughs> they just, they love Sonata that much. And Sonata's like, I'm kind of creeped out by this, but... Also not, it's just, it's great. I love those moments. I love it. And so then, yeah, then we have the big spiel with Katioka. Katioka to Miyuki. And I, I loved it. I was like, that's exactly what needed to be said. When Katioka's like, I want you to be honest. Can you do this? And, and Miyuki, in true trolling Miyuki fashion, he doesn't admit that he's injured. He's like, I'm doing great as a catcher, as cleanup not so hot. And I love that Salomar's like, it's okay that you're a failure. <laughs> Miyuki's like, shut up. And Harichi's like, don't make our captain feel worse. But I love Katioka. I love his his spiel to Miyuki. He's like, look, I trust you. You're the captain. But if, if I think for a second that you can't do this anymore, I'm going to pull you out. And I don't care about your feelings. 
And, and I feel like that's, they say it's harsh and tough love, but I'm like, no, that's exactly what needed to be said. Because Katioga's like, you're an adult. You're a young adult. I'm going to treat you like one. If you're going to be like this, then fine. If you think you're on top of it, okay. But the moment you show that you're not, I'm going to pull you out and you're just going to have to deal with it. And that's when Ono realizes that this whole time, I think Miyuki was preparing for it. That Ono's like, Miyuki's been preparing for this from the start because he's had Ono like subconsciously in the wings ready, ready to go in and do his thing. So I, I really, I don't want Miyuki to leave because he's the captain, but I almost want Ono to be able to make a good play. If they win this game against Yukushi and Ono's the catcher for it, that will be so huge because it means it's kind of like passing the torch. Like, like Miyuki's like, I can trust that our team's going to be good. We have a catcher that when I'm gone is going to be able to, to take over. But I don't know, Koshu's joining the team, so who knows, right? But yeah, Katioka, I love that speech. I love that June, that June's like, you're an idiot. Like, June was really vocal this, this set of episodes. I like that they acknowledge that Miyuki is like one of the most important people on the field, so he doesn't need to just come out. And Rio's like, that's probably why he didn't say anything. And Rio would know because Rio's been in that same position. Rio's like, I get it. And then Katioka makes that big speech where he's like, show me Sato's baseball. Don't do anything half-hearted. Go out there and give it your all. And it's like half, we're halfway through the game and he's given that speech. I'm like, oh my God. And he has a fire like Furia. I've noticed this season that Katioka, I see why he likes both Furia and Sawamura because I think he sees himself in both of them. Like Katioka has the fire like Furia and the calm, cool demeanor throughout most of the time. But then when he gets fired up and gives the impassioned speech, it's like he's channeling that same fire that Sawamura has. So I could see when Sawamura and Furia are adults, I can see part of Katioka in each of them. And that's so cool. But that whole, that whole montage of them walking out in the field, there was like four or five shots. I'm like, this could be the thumbnail too. This is awesome as well. I'm like, damn it. This is badass and great. I was like, I, I just love it. The group shots of them were wonderful. And I liked it the whole time. I do like the fourth wall breaking and like the meta commentary where Todoroki's sitting over there like, well, it looks like we gave him a good time to have a pep talk and a little uh, meeting there. So good for them. <laughs> I like Todoroki's like, good for them, having a little little pep talk over there. Um, and he acknowledges that he's like, it looks like Sato may still have some surprises, but we're all out of surprises. So I like that Todoroki's like, Raichi was kind of our wild card. We've used him. We've brought out Sonata. We don't have any aces left up our sleeve. We're just going to have to be damn good. And I'm like, that's the scary thing is when a team acknowledges they're like, we don't have any aces up our sleeve. We're just going to have to overpower you. And it's like, mm. it's really good. And then, of course, of course, because it's Ace of the Diamond, we have to end on Sawamura versus Raichi. And Miyuki has that little monologue right before about going all out and trusting his team. And I'm like, I, uh, and it's, it's bottom of the fifth. It's three to three. Uh, I just, I just want Sawamura to, I just want Raichi to not hit a homer off Sawamura's pitch, right? Even if it's just like a grounder. Even if it's just like a grounder, it's something. I, I want Sawamura to get Raichi out. I want Sawamura to get I want Sawamura to get him out. I feel like the moment Sawamura gets Raichi out, that's going to be the ultimate testament that he's grown as a pitcher over the course of this series. Because Raichi's always been Sawamura's Achilles heel. It's always been his worst matchup. I, I want Sawamura to get him out so badly. And I don't know if it's, it's the fifth inning still, so I don't know if it's going to happen this time or not. But I just don't want him to, like, I don't want Raichi to score, like, a home run or something off Salmer's pitch and drag Salmer down. Because he's worked so hard to get out of that pit of despair. I'm like, don't you do this. So, I don't know. I can't believe it ended there. What a terrible cliffhanger. But we have six episodes left, so we're going to find out next time, I guess the end result of this matchup. Uh, but these episodes were so good. I I am all for Musashi, Sato, and Koshu joining Sato. I'm all about Shinji, the cinnamon bun, joining Inoshiro. It's just, like, it's just, I feel like these first years, it's funny because it's, we had the first years joining Sato and shaking things up. You know, Haruichi, Furuya, Kanemaru, Tojo, and Sawamura joining the 
as first years and shaking up Sato. And now I feel like we're seeing that this, these new three joining are to shake things up for Sato. But also, in a Shiro getting, Shinji is going to shake things up as well. And it's making me really excited for Act 2 already. Really excited. So... I don't know. I don't know. But I'm curious to know your thoughts down below. Let me know what y'all thought. But mm -hmm, I'm pretty damn excited. So we shall see, won't we? In the meantime, I hope y'all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe. Take care. And yeah, I'll be back next week with episode 46, 47, and 48 of Ace of the Diamond. Bye. <laughs>